what were the first two things that Zam Microsoft announced after acquiring Xamarin? Open source. Open source, yeah, one. And what's the other one? Because that was in the, in the keynote this morning, what's the other one? You don't have to pay for it, <laughs> which would be quite good. So, uh, can you imagine this conversation? So, I just got, I've, I've got this vision of my friend Scott Guthrie. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think we had enough monkeys. <laughs> that, that's, I think that's probably how the Microsoft board looked when they heard the, this conversation. Because I've just got this vision of this conversation going, and Scott Guthrie walks into the room and he says, um, you know this IP we've just bought, this, this company which has got all the software IP, intellectual property, and it's cost us a, a, a fair amount of money. Well, um, I've kind of decided that I'm going to give it away for free. And what's more, I'm also going to make it available to everybody to look at the source code and work out how it's been done. Okay, that's the, I, I can get that. But it's actually had a lot of benefits. If you think about it, one of the reasons, why would you want to make something like this open source? Why would Microsoft, a company who's not associated with making products open source in the past, I mean, if we'd been having this conversation 10 years ago, we would never have talked about Microsoft and an open source product. Um, I remember I was at the launch of Windows Mobile, and that's going back a few years, and the, the, there was a question from the audience is, can we look at the source code for this product? No way. This is ours. <laughs> We're keeping it. But times have changed, and one of the reasons that time, one of the things which has really affected uh, the market is a degree of openness around security. And if you're pitching products to financial markets in particular now, they actually want to get to the root of what's underneath the product. They want to see the source. And actually opening up Xamarin as, as an open source product has actually opened up quite a few markets. We've certainly seen that with my company, that financial institutes in the, U in the UK particularly have actually now taken on Xamarin because they can actually say, there's nothing under here we don't understand. It's secure, we understand it. Now obviously there's, an, there's another huge benefit of open source in that it means you guys can actually contribute to the product. You can go over to open.xamarin.com and you can get the Android and the iOS source code for, for Xamarin. And a lot of people have done that, as you can see from these figures. Now, these are, I took these uh, on Monday. So that, uh, by Monday, and this is in a year and a half since it was, it was launched, there have been 2,711 pull requests on the Xamarin iOS stroke Mac version. Why that's so much higher than the Android world one is a question I'd like to ask people, because I, I guess it's because there's probably a slightly more enthusiastic iOS um, developer support team, but also I think it's because it was mono for iOS originally, so there's been a bit of a back pull from that. But now obviously having a pull request is not the same thing as having someone actually accept your code. There's still going to be, being open source is not about open contribution. People are still going to want to say, Yes or no, you can, you can actually take part in this. And only about 2 or 3% of those pull requests have actually been accepted. But some of them have been accepted. There is code now you are using when you're writing Xamarin code, which has been contributed by the community at large. Some of the people actually attending this conference have contributed bits which have been used in Xamarin now. Interestingly enough, the, um, the guys from Xamarin are very enthusiastic about this. I remember. This is not a monkey, this is Jason, who is actually probably one of the big, biggest code monkeys out there. He's, Jason Smith is the guy behind Xamarin Forms. And I encourage you, there's, there's a great write-up on the Wikipedia about how Xamarin Forms came to be and how Miguel was passing his desk one day and saw some of the stuff he was working on. But I remember being at Evolve um, a year and a bit back when Jason got on stage and said, look, you guys have been asking to be able to contribute to Forms, to, to correct it, to get it fixed. And you're going to have the opportunity to do this, and I want you to do it. I want you, I want you to contribute. Within an hour of him finishing that talk, the first pull request had been made for Xamarin Forms. <laughs> and since then, there's been 1,138 pull requests made. And I have to say that this is the one area where the contributions have been more widely accepted. There's been a lot more um, pull requests actually being accepted on, on Forms than any other area. And it tells, you can tell, tell because the, the product has improved greatly in the last year and a half. I don't know if people, use, people who use Forms, you've probably seen this, it, it's got more stable, um, a lot of the, the, the niggly bits, which if you're a, a development team, you probably haven't got time to fix, but as a community, we've been able to fix for them. Um, some of the edge cases have been, have been sorted out, so there's been some, some real improvements over the last year on Xamarin Forms, and it's, a lot of it's down to the fact it's open and open source. 
Now, open source has got a lot of advantages. Um, and most of my talk today isn't going to be about Xamarin and open source because it's a fairly open and shut case. It's happened, it's been accepted, it's worked. What I really want to talk about is how your life as a developer can be made easier by the fact that there's so much open source stuff out there. Particularly around plugins, components, even open source design tool, tool, uh, design elements are available. So, I love this quote. <laughs> I've heard it attributed to Bill Gates quite a lot, but actually I don't think Bill ever actually said this. But it's the sort of thing I, th I could imagine Bill actually saying. Always ask a lazy person to do a job because they'll, a difficult job, but they'll find the easiest way to do it. I think we should be, all be lazy programmers. And we always have been. If you think about how, I, mean, I, I can go way back in development. I remember we used to share code on, when it was on punch card. We used to hand punch cards between ourselves. So we've got stuff. When I, I, one of my first published works was in a magazine as a shared piece of code. There's always been the equivalent of open source. We've always had shared codes. I'll go back to it. Actually, the first open source project I contributed to was a, a, a Morse code library, which I wrote back in the early 70s. And, and that was traded on the... Uh, well, we didn't, have, we didn't have bulletin boards then, but we used to actually send bits of code by post between people. Well, I'll come back to that in a little while. But we've always shared code. People, people share, and it's great. And there's nothing wrong with using someone else's code if they let you use it. Why do things the difficult way? Why reinvent the wheel? Uh, someone said to me a couple of months back, if, we'd re if everybody had, had to reinvent the wheel, we'd still be walking. So it's important that we can share things. So where do you go to find stuff? This guy is James Montemagno. He's very shy and unassuming in this picture. He's not really in real life. He's an old friend of mine. James is a great guy. If I encourage you to take only one thing out of this whole conference, is it's those two, well, actually take two things out, those two web addresses. So the first one is the component library, which we'll have a look in a minute. And the second one is James's own website, motscod.es or motscodes. Um, James is one of the top guys behind Xamarin. He's one of the evangelists, Microsoft evangelists. Um, he's put together a load of content on those sites. Um, that is required reading for any Xamarin developer. Um, Xamarin, he also does a, a really good podcast, which I was reminded of the other night, called uh, Merge Conflict, which I really encourage people to listen to. You can find the links to that on Mots Codes as well. It's, it's a, an amazing podcast. If you've ever done anything about a development, it teaches you an awful lot. But anyway, James has put together a, a repository of really useful Xamarin components. Uh, let's, let's see if this will actually work today, because it wasn't working yesterday. Oh, there we go. Uh, hey, the internet's working. Excellent. So let's bring this up to full screen. So you can see there are just loads and loads and loads of components. Now, I was talking to someone outside, and they said they wanted to talk to a Bluetooth LE device. Well, there's a, Alan Ritchie's written a, a plugin for Bluetooth. You want to read the fingerprint sensor. You've got fingerprint sensor. Now, you may notice that one name pops up an awful lot on this list. That's James himself. He's written a lot of his con components. And one of the things James spends a lot of time doing is trying to make sure these components still work with each other. He'll contact developers and try to get them to update them. Because one of the... We always used to talk about DLL hell. We now have component hell. Trying to get these things to work together and actually match them. You can spend hours trying to, to work them out. Uh, one of my top tips for any Xamarin developer is the thing you, things to fix most problems are clean your, clean your project, delete your bin, bin, bin in your object li library, update, update all your add-ins, rebuild, and it usually solves most problems. And that's particularly true of the components. Now, this list of components, I've, I've tried about 20 of these over the last couple of days, and they, they all seem to be working pretty well together. They're in the process of, you know, we're moving away from the, P the PCL world, we're going to go into .NET Standard. James is in the process of pushing everybody over to, to produce these plugins as .NET Standard plugins, plugins as well, so they should work into the future. And this list is, complete, is, is kept up to date, um, it's constant work on it, but if you think about it, whatever you want to work with is here. Now, I mentioned a moment ago 
my Morse code project. Now, if I just get my screen to play ball here so I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm just going to pull up. So, years ago, I actually wrote a Morse code app. And I thought it'd be a good idea to re-bring re that into, into the 21st century. <coughs> and fortunately, some, some nice person has, has kept my library going. Well, I think it's my library. It looks very, very similar to my library. And has brought it into .NET and, and created a C-sharp version of Morse code. So I thought, why not take that and um, turn it into something we could run on Xamarin? So this goes to prove you can use any code in Xamarin. It doesn't have to be something written specifically for Xamarin. There's loads of source code out there to do things. I mean, recently we've been working on financial projects. There's APR libraries and things in C Sharp you can use. So just look out there and see what you can find. So here's a very simple uh, C Sharp implementation of a Morse code generator. It literally just has a mapping between dots and dashes and the letters. People know, I take it people know what Morse code is. It's the, the, the old semaphore system. SOS is the famous one, dot, 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 dash, 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 dot, dot, dot. So this just translates letters into, in, in, and it basically builds a string up with them. And then what we're going to do with that is we're going to use this uh, very simple um, Xamarin app. You can see my uh, wonderful design skills at work here. I've, I've created this amazing user interface. If I can get this just stretch across. There you go. It's a fantastic user interface. <laughs> uh, a, a label, an entry, and a, a button. And then being the lazy person I am, I haven't actually done this MVVM, which I would normally do, but I've actually got some code behind. And to be able to do what I want to do, so what I actually want to do is I want to flash the flashlight on my phone to actually do Morse code. Now that's, if you actually started to write that from scratch and you think about how you do that, I'd have to interface the, the camera, I'd have to get the permissions, I'd have to turn the light on and off and turn it on on time, right? This is difficult stuff if you, if you don't know what you're doing. But fortunately, there are already some plugins out there which really help. Now the first one is that James has written a really good plugin um, for doing uh, the permissions. Uh, let's just bring this up. So plugin.permissions, which also brings in this plugin current, current activity. Now permissions are actually quite a tricky thing to do now. It used to be really easy. iOS was slightly challenging. Android, you just clicked the boxes and it did it. But now Android's also asking for permission from the user, in the latest versions. And doing that in a cross-platform way is quite a tricky thing to do. This plugin actually just simplifies that down to virtually no code at all. So let's have a look at what code we need to do to get, get a permission. Now, again, this is actually even simplified, more simplified because fortunately, James actually published this on his site as, a, as an open source piece of code. So this is just like a permissions handler. And what it does is you just set up a, a permissions object, um, passing the interface to the, the, the control he's given us. And then you ask it to request permission if needed. And that just checks to see if the, if the permission is available. So you can, it's not just camera permissions. You could use it for all the other types of permissions, GPS, location, all those things you need to be able to use. Um, very simple. This code is on mots.code.es if you want to find it totally open to use. And then I actually just call this from in, in my code to make sure when I do the on peering, I, I create, create a new camera permission using the cost permissions and then uh, await that with a request to see it's going. So that handles all the permissions for me. I've written two lines of code basically to do that. Rather than 20 or 30 lines of code I'd normally have to write. Again, it shows the power of having plugins and things available to, to work with. So then we get onto the meat of the matter. We, we, want, we want to make this this phone of mine flash. So we're going to have a, we're going to use the Morse converter, which we've got here, um, and that's going to con convert our text we've entered. And then what we're going to do for each of the different types of cases, so, so a dot is a short flash, a, a dash is a longer flash, and then we've got, we're using the at symbol to break words up just to give a, so we have a slightly uh, shorter flash in there. Um, and we're going to use a, another plugin. Um, this is written by one of the guys who works for Xamarin University. And I'll just bring, bring that one up. Kim Philpott, and it's his LAMP plugin. Um, Kim's got some great stuff out there. We'll see more of his stuff later. Um, and I also totally encourage people, if you're not taking part in Xamarin University, take up the offer of some of the free courses. Go along and, and, and watch them. There's some absolutely brilliant stuff on, on Xamarin University. Um, one of my claims to fame is I, I was... This crazy story. 
So back in Future Decoded, which is a massive event they have in London uh, every couple of years, Microsoft, um, about 20,000 delegates turn up for it. I was helping out on the Xamarin stand and Jamie, the lady who runs Xamarin Communities, was kept getting asked by people, how long does it take to train up on Xamarin? How long do you need to take to, to pass the Xamarin University course? And like a fool, I looked at it and I said, well, there's this many classes you need to take. There's one of these every couple of days. I think you could do it in two weeks, which is probably not the wisest thing I ever said. So Jamie says, then says, Gary, um, that sounds like a good challenge. Can you do that for us? So a couple of weeks later, I actually took on that challenge and did manage to pass it in two weeks, but it was a big challenge. And I never recommend anybody takes that, that does it over two weeks. Three months is about right. Um, but it's well worth doing. And there's now two um, certifications you can take. There's the Certified Developer, which is the top one, and the Certified Mobile Professional, mobile professional which is slightly lower. Both three-hour exams, slightly less classes to take for one than the other. But well worth doing, and you'll learn an awful lot. The other thing I'd say about Xamarin University is a great way of learning programming generally. They've got huge, for example, if you want to learn a language, say you want to get into F, F Sharp, there's a huge amount of courses available on F Sharp on Xamarin University. Really good stuff. Um, well worth a look. Anyway, getting back to the meat of this matter. So, we, so I've added in a plugin, which is the cross, cross lamp, and I call that, so I've got a current instance of it, and I turn it on. So basically I'm just checking, I'm just doing a quick for each, it's very quick and dirty code, this, but there's a pause after each one, and then it turns off. I wouldn't recommend writing code like this, but it works. So I'm going to run this on my little phone here. And I'll probably try and show you the output. Um, that's going to connect this time. There we go. Oops. So, so we've got a lovely interface, and we'll, we'll try the, the, the standard traditional thing because I, I want to get out of here. A, <laughs> so you can hopefully you can see that start flashing any second. If I tap the right part of the screen. There we go. So SOS. Right, so I'm going to hide the screen for a second because I want to um, try something different. Oh, actually, you can see it much better with the lights off. Thank you. <laughs> so let me just try, try that again. So I'll, I'll, I'll send the SOS out first so you can see that again. So a very simple app written with very few lines of code by using plugins. Okay, so I said I was giving away prizes. So I'm just going to type something in here and send, send it out. And the first person who can guess what I've typed in here and uh, will win a prize. <laughs> I can give a clue. It's, it's very thematic to, to what we, where, where we are. Microsoft? No. A winner! <laughs> I will, get, I will I'll find a prize in a second. There you go. Have a pen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, but the point of that is not, it's not so much about giving prizes out. It's, it's the fact that this code is really simple stuff to do. And you can, you can choose whatever plugins you want to work with. But open source isn't just about um, code. It's also about design. And people... I don't realize this. This actually came up in, a, in one of the talks we had, um, I think it was yesterday actually, uh, where someone asked, is there any repositories for good design for Xamarin? Is there any way you can go and find good form layouts and, and the like? And this is a great site. It's again it's set up by, a, a, I think it's a couple of Dutch guys, um, but it's been contributed to by, by a lot of the Xamarin University people, snippets.io. And so actually have a look at that site. Lovely bit of design on the left, by the way. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. So let's, let's just go through to snippets.io. So we'll give you a sneak peek or something else there. Okay. So as you can see, lots and lots of different nice design, layers of design. So this one on the left is uh, again written, I think it's actually might be Kim, Kim again, but that's actually a list view. 
It doesn't look much like a list view. We'll have a look at the code behind that in a second. Most of these are grids. Most of them are just straightforward grids. For little bit. It shows you what you can do with Xamarin Forms. This is Xamarin Forms. Most of these have not got custom renders or, or, or any effects on them. They're just plain Xamarin Forms. And it shows you what you can do if you, if you spend a little bit of time putting things together. And these are just available to you. You can download them and, and tweak them to your heart's content. So I'm just going to load up one of those so we can have a look at it. Find it. There we go. So hopefully uh, the previewer will actually decide to render this time. So while, it, while it's doing that, let's have a quick look at look at this. So this is that that list view we're looking at. So you can see the schedule. And, uh, for some reason, it's not rendered the dots this time, but but they are there. So it's very simple. It's a list view, and it, uh, I take it you know how you could, with a list view you can put your uh, item templates, your headers, and your footers on. on. So we've got a list view, we've got a header with, some inf with the title information. So even this bit at the top is part of the list view. And then we've got an item template. And that's basically made up of a view cell with a grid in it. And it's got three columns, as you can see. Um, and then two rows, one auto height and one fill the rest of the space. And all it puts in there is a label, grid, and then it uses a this little red line down the middle is actually a box view. So, that, and then it's very, very simple. Just stretch vertical box view to, to form a line. And then it, the bit which isn't showing for some reason at the moment is the bullet point. So, if we go back to the slide quickly, I can get my cursor to work. So we can see the little round box blob. That's actually just a, a, a bitmap image which has been put into the grid. So. It's a very simple approach, but it works. And it looks like nothing else you've ever developed in Xamarin Forms. These things are available to you now. You can, you can go and grab that anytime you want from that, that site. And I, I thoroughly recommend going to, to snippets.io and having a look. Um, there's, a, there's a lot on that site. It's, uh, Now, some of them do have custom renderers, but they're included as well. But you can see all the categories we've got down the left-hand side. You've got loads of various. Now, some of these haven't actually got any content in because the people are, are contributing all the time. Now, this is also the other thing. You can contribute to this as well. You've got, so I encourage people to contribute good design to the, this. Uh, now, I say, I'm saying that to a room full of developers. Uh, there might be one, the odd designer in here. So I suspect that might not be the case, that we'd be actually be doing much good design because most of us aren't actually that good at it. But if, you know good, if you've got stuff which has been designed for you by the designers and they're happy for it to be set up, set up there, it, it's great to give some really good examples of things. I do like that one. Right, so... To, back to the presentation, if I can get it to go. There we go. So this is not a monkey either. This is Martin Van Dyke. He he is an, another real code monkey um, inventor. Of, we've had so many MVVM libraries at this this meeting. <laughs> I think everybody in the we've got one in the room. We've developed. For, we've had uh, MVVM Lite this morning, and uh, obviously Martin did MVVM Cross. That's what he's mostly known for. Um, he's also his site has also got a load of open source bindings, which are really useful for binding to various third party um, sets, code sets. The, but I'm not actually going to talk about any of that today because other people have covered that in, in, in some detail. I want to talk about a, a lesser known library that Martin's put together, which I absolutely love and I think is really, really useful. So let's just go pop over here. So just to, an example of the stuff he's put together. You've got MVM Cross, obviously. Xamarin Media Manager is well worth knowing about. If you, if you ever have to play audio or video in, in, in Xamarin, that's a really useful tool. Um, there's also VLC Xamarin, which is quite an interesting one. So you can actually use the VLC player on Android to play back media, which, and that plays back virtually any media you, you might like. Um, the Xamarin Item Touch helper is not so useful these days because we've actually got some of the bindings in there already. Um, if you've ever used Google X EXO, you can use the EXO player. But what I want to talk about today about is Lottie for Xamarin. Um, I don't know if anybody's ever come across Lottie. Lottie was done by Airbnb. And it's a way of doing little tiny animations. 
and it's based on After Effects. So if you've, if you've ever come across Adobe After Effects, it's a very p powerful tool which is used by a lot of designers to design animations. And you see there's a huge library of these animations. And we know, as, as Xamarin developers, it's not about the content. It's not about how good our program is, how, how well it does the business stuff. It's how it looks. That's all the people who are buying it want to, want to know. They want, so putting a nice bit of fancy animation in is going is to make your life go well. And there are loads and loads and loads of animations on this, book, this, um, to this set. As you can see, I think there's 27 pages full, plus there's also two other sites which have got these on as well. Now, the other thing about these are, are they're, they're actually little tiny bits of XML. They've been exported from After Effects as, as XML, so they're, they're very light. So if you think about the other ways you might put animation into your, into your program, you could put animation in, we saw Skia being talked about the other day, Skia Sharp, but you're going to have to write a lot of code to get an animation up. You could do an Anagif, but then you're talking about overhead in terms of file size. These things are tiny. I mean, that, that complex the one with the astronaut is less than, I think it's about 600 bytes of XML. So you're not talking about much at all. You put loads of these in your app and without very minimal overhead. And, they, and you can, there's lots of them out there. You don't have to uh, invent the wheel because these are all public domain. You can all just go and grab them and use them. And Martin's put together a really nice library for doing that. So I'm going to actually try and write a bit of code from scratch here. So let's see if it works. So let's bring this up. So I did actually start the app, the project earlier because I didn't want to have you waiting around while I was loading solution items. So all I've done here is this is a, basically a, a standard um, Xamarin Forms app with the old welcome to Xamarin Forms. Um, all I've done in, in it is I've added a couple of packages in. I've added the, this, as I said, there's an Airbnb, so you just look for Xamarin Forms Lottie. On the uh, in the pod, in the package library, so let's just show that up. So hopefully it's going to take a lot of you for forms. Just add that in, and we need to add that into the Droid package and the iOS package as well. I'm using Visual Studio for Mac, and then all I need to do is actually modify my sample a little bit. Oh, one thing I do need to do, I need to add an asset in as well, so I need to add in, uh, add in the file I'm actually going to use, so let's, let's do that now. So I've got downloaded one of those files earlier. Oh, actually, if it actually was there, let's grab that one. So we'll copy that in. And I just opened it up earlier. But just to have a look at what that contents of that is, I mean, it's not really human readable, but it's, it's just a set of drawing commands. Um, and we'll see what that looks like in a minute. So I'm going to bring up the page and start adding some bits in. So the first thing I'm going to need to do, actually let's shrink that down a little bit so you can see, see the code a bit better, is I'm going to need to add in a XMLS. As we do with everything when we want to add plugins in. If I could type, it would help. So this is the CLR namespaces, I think Lottie Forms. Let's channel check that. And it lives in an assembly called Lottie Forms as well. So is everybody, is everybody familiar with that with the namespace syntax? It's basically just a way of bringing in external um, DLLs and plugins into the XAML space, so you can then use them in XAML. So just use them de declaratively in design. Um, so I think what, what we'll do here is we'll we'll add a, a stack panel in as well, a stack layout, and we'll bother. We'll just copy that down to the bottom. Oops, missed. Oh well, I'll put that in, in a second. And, Stack layout, and we'll change some of our words. So let's see. Uh, 
Not really, but, but it will be this time. Um, and then we need to add a forms control in. So, we've, so we, we can say we've, uh, because we've added it in properly with the XMLS, we've actually got our um, hints and tips appearing automatically. Visual Studio is very good at picking those up in, in the uh, designer these days. So let me just choose that one properly. Oops. If I could type. There we go. Um, so it's a form of animation view. And all I'm going to do here is actually set the animation to that JSON file we added in. Now, that's actually not going to do a lot of good because if I just did that, it wouldn't play the animation. Nothing would actually start up. So I'm going to actually start, start up autoplay as well. So say autoplay true. And, and that should be it. That should all be all, all we need to do. So let's, let's hopefully this is going to run. Um, let's put it onto the right device I want to run it to. And see if she will do so. Would help if I turn this back on. And bear with me a second. That's right. Yeah. So the preview. Yeah. So the preview is not always that good with with third party yeah. tools. Um, it's getting better. There's quite a few of them will now display, but this is using some stuff in the background which it doesn't support at the moment. But Yes, the live viewer would show the animation. Actually, I actually almost did this demonstration with live viewer because it, it, it's very good for this sort of stuff. Right there, here we go. So, where's my visor gone? Oops, got an error. <laughs> ah, what did I type wrong? <laughs> it's probably spot my deliberate mistake there. <laughs> I'll smile. <laughs> you move, you move a bit. Oh, okay, I, I, I won't smile. Yeah, you're not allowed to move, man. All right. I That's mean, good. All right. Let me just pull, 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 pull. Do, let's do the classic here's one I prepared earlier because I obviously typed something wrong last time. Yeah. Okay, I'll just take those two bits out because I don't want to put those in. All right. Let's try this again. That's. It's always been thinking about doing Xamarin demo demos. It always seems to take a long time to actually run. <laughs> Not really, though. Yeah. There we go. That's better. It's installing this time. It's, 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 me, it's me speaking very well. Uh, <laughs> uh, what you can do is just like if we're in the middle, it's going to be probably better. Yes, it's the one in the middle anyway. It's just moved over. It's fallen over. Let me, let me talk a bit louder. Yeah. I told you, you should shout up if I'm, if I'm too quiet. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So, did we miss it? You must have done. Let's try it up, run it up again. There we go. So we've actually just put that animation in with literally one, two lines of code. And we could do any of those animations. We could have 500 of these things sitting in our application. Now there's a, it's slightly restricted in Xamarin Forms, but there's a, a really good demonstration for Xamarin Android, um, which I can bring that up, which shows the real power of this project. And this is all open source. You can download it f from the Martin site. So let me just run this version up. Android.
Oh yes, <laughs> well spotted. <laughs> yes, I've the, the emulator will take for even longer than my device to, to run up. And let's bring that back up again. So, anybody can people see a use for this? Is it something you'd actually use in your applications? So, again, thinking about. The, over, the alternatives you've got here. One, you've got to design these, uh, these animations yourself, and there's loads of them already available. Two, if you've, if you've designed them yourself, you've then got to animate them in some way, so you've got all the choice of all the animation libraries. Or you can use an anti GIF, but with an anti GIF, you, some anti GIFs take up an awful lot of room, especially if they've got multiple frames in them. So this is a really good way of, of uh, reducing the overhead in your, your application keeping the footprint down, but also having that nice visual impact. There's a one we use quite a lot. It's a basically um, where we want to transition from a, a screen with a menu to one with a back button. We've actually got an animated hamburger, which turns into a back button as you go across. And it's just a nice visual tweak, but it makes a lot of difference to how it looks. It brings a, a sort of flow to the page. <coughs> and we've actually built that into our templates, so it pours all the time now for some reason. This is taking a very long time to run up. I obviously didn't sacrifice enough to the demo gods. <laughs> They're uh, taking a long time to run at the moment. It's, it's something um, I've, I've not had it as bad as, G as Jim Bennett had yesterday when, when uh, the audience managed to destroy his computer while he was actually trying to do the demo, but <laughs> it's, it's uh, definitely going slower than I normally expect it to. We've all been suffering a bit this week because uh, obviously uh, Apple dropped uh, the the latest uh, iOS this week, and th there's been an update to Xcode, and I've not been able to install that. So that's one of the reasons I'm running Android-only versions of these applications, not the Android and the iOS ones, because I haven't had to be, be able to get up to date. But the Android this works just as well in iOS, and for some reason that has actually just come up with an error on the <laughs> the demo version, which is not very good. Let me see if I've got got it on here anyway. I'm trying that way. Ah, uh, yes, you're right. It's, it's, it's not set the right target. Yeah. Let's try that one more time. Otherwise, right, so we'll just have to go into the code and have a look. we got it and it's got a version of iOS I'm actually running a droid version that's very useful Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. This is what I'm going to have to do. That's a bit weird. Weird. That it's actually run, running that. <coughs> oh, yeah. Let's get rid of that one as well. So it's just because he's trying to build the library for Lottie as well. Yeah, oh yeah, TVOS and the Mac OS as well. <laughs> Good point. Yes, sorry, I forgot about that. Because it's obviously, I only want the, the droid version for the map. I'm surprised it's actually rebuilding that. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Right, blame the blame the presenter. I, I, I was picking the wrong project completely. <laughs> that that would explain everything. All right, let's see if this will run run without that now. It probably. No, the Galaxy Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you, I'm glad we've got a very attentive audience. They're actually spotting all my mistakes. 
All right, let's try that. <coughs> no wonder it's taking so long to load as well, because I was building the whole library. But that's the point, actually, because it's, it's, it's open source. I've got access to the whole library, so I can, I can do whatever I want to do with it. That's better. It's running up this time. Hey, that looks better. Oh, deployment failed. That's weird. Seems to be there. Let's see if it'll run. Yeah, it's going to run anyway. Let's show you what I'm seeing. Okay, so another nice animation. And the, the, this uh, application, which is part of the package you get with the open, from the um, repository, has got loads and loads and loads of examples of things you can animate on here. So yeah, and you can choose whether they would repeat or whatever. But the one I wanted to show you, and this isn't actually in the Xamarin Forms package at the moment for, for Lottie, but I think it's really cool. And I think it'd be really nice if someone was, would um, take on the challenge of putting a pull request in to uh, the, the package to actually in implement this, because uh, I just love this fact that you can do animated typing. But you see, that's really, it's just, I, I can't, I'm try, I've, I've been trying to rack my brains as, as to use for this, where, where, where you'd actually, what sort of project you'd actually get away with putting that in, but I, I guess there's some sort of greeting or, uh, or maybe, a chat app or somewhere where you want to put a bit of a flash of, uh, into it, but it's such a nice, nice little feature to be able to do that. Now that's actually in the Xamarin Android uh, version and, and the iOS version, um, and it's it's just a, a view control that they put in there, which is really easy to do. So it basically, it replaces this, the standard entry and allows you to, to put uh, text in. Um, I. Struggle sometimes, to, there are some really nice things out there which you struggle sometimes to work out what you'd actually do with them, but you'd actually want, you think, I'd, I'd really like to make some, some use of that. Now, one I wanted to show you, because this is, I think this is 120 bytes long, this, the file which processes this. And obviously it'll repeat forever, but you get the idea of what you what you can pack into a small space. Okay, so I want to finish off with an audience challenge. I can find my slides again. <coughs> so I'll leave that up there, there while I'm talking. How many of you have contributed to open source projects? That's actually quite a large number. Last time I did this, I got two hands up. <laughs> How many of you put pull requests in which have actually been accepted? I'm going to ask this man here because he knows all about this stuff. Why do you think your pull request was accepted? What did you do which enhanced your chances of getting your pull request accepted? Mm. Uh. Reading the contribution guide. Yep, that's number one. So always read the contribution guide. Always understand what people want you to, to give them as part of the project. The title for the pull request. Yep, the yes. Yep, so uh, again, being very clear when you, when you submit a pull request what you're submitting. S explain what you're putting into, the, into the, the repository properly. And generally learning about the project's culture, so how generally a pull request looks like, what kind of testing, what kind of quality, yeah. ensure, whatever things they are using. Okay, so I've had this conversation with the Xamarin team recently. They reckon about 70% <coughs> of the pull requests they get, they reject out of hand because they don't give enough in information. Quite often they're just feature requests, which is obviously not what you want. You, you actually want to, when you're doing a pull request, you're actually submitting a fix, effectively, or, 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 or a new feature, but it's, but it's not just a request for that feature. You actually want to put that stuff in. 
So the, the thing they've absolutely asked for is much more clarity on the, on the, the, the content, putting into detail in as to, as to what you're actually trying to submit. So the three things they said they wanted is the reason for the pull request, why are you putting it in, in what, what problem does this solve, who is it targeted at, so, for example, if you've got a Xamarin Forms bug on iOS you're fixing, that's your target audience. You're, you're targeting the iOS developer on Forms. And a clear example of the fix. So, not just the, the, the code for the, for the fix, but an example of when it's broken. So you can actually see the, the, the um, fix in progress in, in practice. And that's going to, you're much likely, more likely to get your, your um, pull request accepted. It's even better if the example is a test. Yes, yeah, if, if the example is a test. Yes, and test, tests are very good as well, <laughs> obviously. Now, my call to action here is, is go and look at the open source repositories out there. Go and look at some of these components. Think about some of the stuff you've done. Could it be contributed to the community? I've got about 20 components out there I've, I've, I've computed. I mean, guys in the room have put loads of stuff out, out on, on, the, on the community, and it's, and, it, and it's all very useful, and it's all stuff we can share. And sharing code is good, because we want to be lazy programmers. We, we don't want to spend our time writing code if we absolutely have to. We want to write four lines of code and have a Morse code app flashing lights, or, well, we probably don't, but we, we want to be able to write a line of code and have an animation flying up on the screen. There's lots of stuff out there which you can do. This is only a very small subset of, of the wide world of components out there. Um, there's a, a site called Xamarin Components which just popped up, which has got loads of stuff on it. There's, there's a whole load of new, new ones coming every day. And the quality is excellent. The community, we've got a really good, strong community who, who, who's policing this stuff really well. Um, there's very few things out there I wouldn't recommend. So go out there, have a look at it. If you can contribute, contribute. And thank you very much for your time. <laughs>